Today's plan is to install the Pro Mariner Pro Safe uh, Failsafe. This is a galvanic isolator, or galvanic, however you want to pronounce that. Um, I have the 60 amp model because I have a 50 amp shore power cord that I have to uh, plug into. So uh, hopefully this will protect the boat from any stray currents that are in the uh, in the harbor. The wiring di diagram for this is actually quite simple. Um, all we're going to have to do is disconnect the shore power cables and then take the two, um, two grounding wires, put them on that post and uh, splice in the uh, AC grounding bus on the other side. So it shouldn't uh, take too long. Um, I've been told this is one of the easiest uh, things to install, uh, but we'll have to go ahead and disconnect the shore power and get to it. As a general rule of thumb, whenever you're playing with your electrical system, it is a good idea to unplug it. That way that there is no chance that you are going to shock yourself. Um, I've also flipped all the breakers in the boat as an added precaution. But now we need to unplug it from here. Those can just wait for now. Next up we need to unbolt uh, the inlets and they will expose our grounding wire that we're going to be splicing this into. Hopefully it won't rain while we're doing this. So I've got two types of uh, inlet here. I think they just got installed at different times. But the green right here, that is our grounding wire on both of these. So um, in order to get to this one, I have to finagle it a little bit. But uh, it's down in there. Um, there it is. So there's our grounding wire. And you see that the black one got hot at one point in time and I actually already fixed that so that's why it looks burnt but the uh, so the green one there is what we need to get off and uh, we'll have to actually strip some of this uh, coating off down below in order to get access to it um, I actually probably didn't need to take this one off but eh, might as well it's good to check these connections every now and then uh, as a precaution against uh, corrosion and electrical fires. Now, these plugs are cord uh, color coordinated, um, so I usually have a pretty easy time figuring out what's what on here. As you can see, green, white, black. So coming back to this in a little bit uh, shouldn't be too big of a problem. Okay. This insulation, it's uh, 
you know, good for insulating, but not good for splicing wires in. And it's very tough to cut. So I'm gonna have to go very slow and gently to make sure that I don't damage any of the wiring below it. I won't take off about a foot of it. Okay, so now I think I have enough exposed. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually plug it back into its uh, into its socket. That way, it is in the correct position, and we'll just leave it there, up there. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, so looking at it. A little bit closer. I actually like to get it stripped all the way down to here. You see this one, it's actually bare the entire way along, um, so it's not going to be a problem to, you know, make a cut here and splice it into the isolator, but this one, um, because it's kind of resisting that, I'd like to get it trimmed all the way back, maybe to back here even. Um, that way there's not a sharp corner in these wires and I can guide them up nice and neat up through the uh, up through the hole up there. And I don't come back to this part of the boat often. Crazy. Okay. So let's get back into trimming mode. We'll feed this back up. Um, what I'm gonna have to do at some point as well is get uh, get one of those little plastic crimpy deals to kind of get these guys organized and stable um, because you don't want to have loose AC wires rubbing around inside your boat. That is a textbook way to get um, a boat fire. So with that, I will head back up. I should probably go ahead and replace this, um, given that it has burnt before, but you know what I like to say is that I am cheap. <laughs> okay. Now with those on there, I need to lock them on. Okay, we should be done up here for now. Now back down below. We'll get the uh, isolator there rigged up to go. So a bit of a problem here. Um, all the hardware and wiring I bought, it's uh, 10 gauge uh, because that's what I thought I had. But uh, I just compared it to the uh, actual shore power cord. And I think that I actually need eight 8 gauge. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go shopping real quick, and I'll be back. I've got these uh, 8 gauge ring terminal things. Uh, so basically, now I need to actually mount the box inside the engine room, and uh, then we'll splice in the uh, the grounding wire. And that is pretty much all you have to do. Um, we'll watch for it to turn on. Um, it, the instruction manual mentioned that uh, if the fan comes on as soon as the, uh, as soon as you basically turn it on, uh, the power, then you have a bigger problem. If it doesn't turn on, then we know it's working. Uh, so this is a very interesting piece of equipment because of that.
because this piece plays such a vital role in the safety of the boat, I'm actually going to make sure I get all four of these in nice and tight. I normally would just kind of skip it <laughs> and have bake it, but this time I really don't want to do that. I really want to be safe. All right, that box is not going anywhere anytime soon. Cool. Next up, we need to clip and trim the grounding wires, which are the green ones. I want to give them just enough room to reach. So I've got my two grounding wires cut. Now I need to strip them, and then I'll crimp. I'll crimp one of these guys on there. Now these are the heat shrink versions of the. Um, these are heat shrink, so uh, I'm gonna blast it with some heat. Let it cool for a minute. Okay, here's a much better view of the handiwork I just did. I'm gonna come back later and uh, clean up the wiring, but uh, that is that. Um, let's go ahead and try plugging in the shore power, and then we will um, find out for sure if this is working. Before I do that, though, I want to break these down a little bit, make them nice and tight. Let's go outside and make sure I'm not going to burn the boat down. When we put the shore power on, oops. We always go from the boat side first. Okay. Now that the boat side is plugged in, we'll walk over to the dock. And the shore power will come on. So now we're energized, but the breaker switch on the boat is still turned off. So we'll turn the breaker back on. And we've got power, no amps. Um, let's go ahead and turn on a few of the, these. I'm not gonna turn on the battery charger yet. Maybe we'll come in here and check the handiwork that I just did. Cool, nothing is on fire. Thank you for watching, uh, that's all for today. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.